we just need to tell our application that it has to use the DB context, which is inside application DB context, and then it has to use a SQL server using the connection string that we defined inside the app settings.json. We will tell our application to do that inside program.cs where we configure the services that our application will use. So here we have the comments to add the services to the container. Make sure you always do that before you build the builder. So right here, we want to add a new service. So on builder.services, the service that we want to add is dbcontext. So you can see we have .add dbcontext and that expects a class file. The class file that we are using for dbcontext is the application dbcontext. If you press control dot, we will just have to add the using statement to the data folder. Now when we configure this dbcontext, if we go back to the application dbcontext, right here we are passing the options and we are sending those options to the base class. So inside options, we have to configure use of SQL Server and connection string. So here we will say options goes to, this is just the syntax, we will say options dot, there is a method with the name of use SQL Server, but it will not be available like that. Even if you press control dot, it will not give you the package name that you have to add. So for that, we will have to go back to the manage NuGet packages, and we will have to install a package, which is SQL Server with Entity Framework Core, which is Microsoft dot Entity Framework Core dot SQL Server. Make sure you are using the consistent version. If one version of the package you are using is Preview 7 and other one is Preview 5 or even .NET 5, then things won't work and you will run into error message. So always make sure that you are using the same version. Let me install the SQL Server and we will close the NuGet packages. Now if you press Ctrl dot, you will see the using statement using Microsoft.EntityFramework Core. We will add that and on this SQL Server, we have to write the connection string. So where exactly is our connection string? That is inside app settings, we used a special block with the name of connection strings. Since we wrote our connection string inside the special block theme that I was talking about, we can directly use the key value here to extract the connection string. Let me copy this name. We will go back to our program.cs and right here on builder.configuration, we have an existing method that is provided which is get connection string. Inside this method, we have to pass the string name, which is default connection. Once you use that, it will automatically find the connection string and configure our SQL Server. Now this get connection string is a special method and this method will only look for this default connection inside a block with the name of connection strings. If you named this connection strings one, then it will not be able to find this connection string because this method will only look inside the block which is connection strings. So that is why I said to name it exactly the same. If you wanted to name it something else, we have different ways of getting that, but I do not want to go into those details right now. So with this, our DB context will be configured with the connection string. So all the configuration is done that was needed for the DB context. Now we are on the final step where we have to create database and then the table inside SQL Server. Let's take a look at that in the next video.